So I will say good morning to, or uh, November 11th, we'll greet everybody on November 11th uh, today and uh, appreciate them joining us. And also a reminder uh, to those watching and for those here, so our in-person services start November 28th uh, for seniors at 1030 and November 29th for everybody else at 1030. There are registration forms available uh, on our on our web page uh, sarniaemc.org and so we have one more coffee break that's going to happen that's next Wednesday it will be our last Wednesday morning coffee break and then uh, there won't be any the week after that as we prepare for the weekend uh, service so and um, we'll remind you of that in different ways uh, over the course over the course of these uh, next couple weeks um, so I just want to spend a few minutes just in uh, reflection on uh, Remembrance Day and appreciate those who've taken uh, the opportunity to join with us in person. And we've had a chance to just share a little bit about uh, how uh, we have been impacted either by those who have served or the significance of Remembrance Day. And certainly for me in my, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I continually reflect on is I don't have a personal connection to um, to the wars or anything like that. Um, yet I do live in a country that affords me great freedoms, and a country, most of all, that has uh, allowed me to uh, discover what it means to have a faith in Christ and the freedom to live that out. And uh, that's that's really where uh, my my capacity to reflect on Remembrance Day comes. And having had met many people uh, over the years uh, who have served, whose parents or grandparents have served and understanding their stories and the significance of those sacrifices. And so I, I just want to share just a few minutes w of, uh, of some thoughts uh, with you in, in terms of Remembrance Day, November 11th, Armistice Day, it's called in some parts of the world. Our, our uh, little friends to the south, they call it Veterans Day. Uh, but since 1919, we have intentionally taken time to pause, to reflect, to remember, and to retell the story of how peace was brought and at the great price at which freedom has come to be part of our normal existence. It's interesting uh, to even to think about that, right? Um, to be able to pause to, to do those kinds of things and, and to think about in 1919, we maybe have not thought so much about this, but at, during the latter parts of the First World War, the world was also dealing with the Spanish flu, and there was no way to shrink back from the needs of uh, being available for the wartime effort, and, uh, and tens of millions of people died uh, in addition to those who lost their lives during the war. 65,000 soldiers willingly gave their lives in World War I, those veterans are obviously no longer with us. 42,000 soldiers sacrificed themselves for our freedom in World War II. And those, who, those veterans, those numbers dwindle ever so quickly. And that's only from this country. Thousands more throughout the rest of the previous century and uh, almost and hundreds of soldiers have given their lives in our most recent efforts in Afghanistan and and, uh, and we talk a little bit about that here uh, this morning as well. For some, Remembrance Day is an opportunity to recapture the valiant history of military achievement. For many more, it is a privilege to retell the stories, to look again at the pages and the faces, to fill the silent air with earnest prayer, all in the hopes that the relative peace that has been won will not soon be taken away. Remember me. To remember, it conveys the idea of recalling uh, or bringing back to mind certain ideas, thoughts, or people for the purpose of triggering or stimulating a response. That's the idea of remembrance. Psalm 25. Uh, Psalm 25 says this. In you, Lord, I, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies uh, triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are, 
who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truths and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Those are the first seven verses of, of Psalm uh, 25. Remembrance, mentioned three different times at the end of, that, of, of the end of those verses, is an important act that intentionally reaches back and then uh, for the purpose of moving us forward. Remember me is what Joseph said uh, in Genesis chapter 40. Day after day with those who committed crimes against the king, Joseph sat among them in prison and, and, and he said, remember me. And he was speaking directly to the cupbearer at the time, but he was probably speaking indirectly to God. Remember me, get me out of here. I'm in a situation I don't deserve. I don't belong here. God, remember me. Remember me. That's what Samson said on the last day of his life, knowing that he had disappointed God and violated the gift and of his unique talents and abilities. He had sold himself for the sensual pleasures of a woman. He stayed too close for too long and had finally been overcome as a result of his sin. And he recognized in his, in these last moments, he did not want to be defined by those previous mistakes and so his cry was remember me one more time he pleads with god let me serve you even if it means to serve you sacrificially let me do it for you god and if i perish that's okay i just want to be i want to know that you know me remember me is samson's call remember me is also the prayer that hannah prayed in in the book of uh, first samuel she was weakened, she was desperate, she had been mistreated, she had been ridiculed by those around you, and she prayed to the God who gave her life, that he would also create life within her. Remember me, under the watchful eye of the prophet Eli, hearing her and seeing her heart mercifully cry out to her creator, she was brought to a place of yielding, not only for her own life, but that which would influence another generation. Remember me, she would say, for I am your servant, and so shall my child be. Remember me is also what Nehemiah prayed. He as he continually worked at, against the odds, and against the opposition, and rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, being subject to insults and attacks from the enemy, bringing encouragement to those who joined with him and striving to do something nobody thought could be done. His prayer always began with, remember me. Remember me, he would, pr he would pray, subjecting his task to the overall purpose of God's divine plan. Remember me so that those, who, who, those things which God has allowed would, begin, would be allowed to continue on. Remember me, that's what Zechariah prayed. That's what the Lord wants for us, to rely on his strength. Remember me, he prayed, so that we can walk in his ways. Remembrance does that with us. It Call, recalls us, places us in a place of rec recollection in order to influence our response, our action. Remember me was also the prayer of the thief that hung on the cross, one of the thieves that hung on the cross beside Jesus as he evaluated his life and impending death. His desire was to be remembered by God. Remember me. It's a cry for all of us uh, to that we are known by God and that we are loved by him. And, and some of us resist uttering those words, and, but like the thief on the cross, to recognize that there's always mercy available because of God who grants life. Remember me is the means by which the thief moved from death to life. We had, on Remembrance Day, often uh, bring this, uh, this poem uh, in Flanders Field uh, to remembrance. And the reason for it is not only does it bring us back, but it also influences the way we think in the present and hopefully changes 
continues to, to influence our, our decisions, our actions as we move forward. So let me share that uh, for you now by John McRae, written in 1915. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling, from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. On the uh, website for uh, Canadian veterans, um, our government's placed this statement. It says, By remembering their service and their sacrifice, we recognize a tradition of freedom these men and women have fought to preserve. They believe that their actions in the present would make a significant difference for the future, but it is up to us to ensure that their dream of peace is realized. On Remembrance Day, we acknowledge the courage and the sacrifice of those who serve their country and acknowledge our responsibility to work for the peace they fought hard to achieve. I'm going to just invite us to just to pause and take a moment to pray. And maybe in your prayer you give thanks, or maybe in your prayer you pray, continue to pray for the peace of our country and our world. And then I'll, I'll pray for us all in a, in a moment as well, and then we're going to sing O Canada together. And if you want to stand for O Canada, you, you can, right? All right, let's pray. Father, there's no, uh, there's no trumpet call for us today. Um, but we unite our hearts with uh, men and women and boys and girls across our country and uh, around the world as they pause. Pause to give thanks for the hundreds of thousands of millions of lives uh, that have been sacrificed for the sake of freedom. And we give you thanks for each life and each family that those lives represent. In our country, in our space and time, we enjoy peace that perhaps sometimes we take for granted and we, for, we ask forgiveness for that. The sacrifice, the, uh, the uh, frugal means by which many live their lives uh, the unknowing uh, as they sent loved ones off are things that we uh, have no concept to even come close to imagining. But we are the benefactors of their sacrifices. And so thank you. Father, may we do our part to uphold and to uh, keep the peace that you have entrusted to us. We thank you all the more that we have the freedom to come together in these manners, to recognize the difference that Jesus Christ makes in establishing peace to the hearts of men and women and boys and girls. And we pray, Father, that uh, you would continue to allow 
his peace to be made known one to another. So as we come today, we pray, God, for the comfort of God to those who look back in remembrance and mourn. We give you thanks today, our Father, for those who continue to serve in various roles uh, in the maintenance of our, our freedoms and our peace, whether they serve here in our country or around the world. We give you thanks for their willingness to go. And as we, as we move forward, Father, we pray that you would continue to raise up people who are willingly willing to um, be diligent in taking on the responsibility of upholding freedom and peace. And so, God, we look to you uh, first and foremost with gratitude. And we commit this country to you, and we pray for the leaders that you have appointed. God, that you would use them uh, to further your kingdom plan, whether they know it or not. And help us, God, to honor those sacrifices of those who have gone before. So we commit all this to you, in Jesus' name. Amen.